steric hindrance. I will teach you the complete concept of steric hindrance and its application. Firstly, let me teach you that what is steric hindrance. Well, consider this organic compound. We can see that this is alkyl group CH3 and this is also alkyl group CH3. The distance between these two alkyl groups are less than van der Waals radius. Remember that when I say that the distance between the two groups are less than van der Waals radius, it means that they are too close to each other. Let me repeat it. When I say that the distance between the two groups are less than van der Waals radius, it means that they are too close to each other. Hence, these two alkyl groups are too close to each other. Here, their electronic density interact with each other. As a result of this interaction, they repel each other in opposite direction. This repulsion within a molecule is called steric hindrance. The steric hindrance means that these two non-bonding alkyl groups repel each other in this organic compound. Therefore, we define steric hindrance as the repulsion between two groups present on a carbon atom if the distance between the two is less than van der Waals radius is called steric hindrance. Thus we learn that steric hindrance is the repulsion between two groups and a molecule. Now we will learn one important concept, steric hindrance and stability. Also we will learn one important board question, why trans-butene is more stable than cis-butene? Well, consider these organic compounds. Here, the alkyl groups are present at the same site or at adjacent site. We call such type of isomer as cis-butene. While in this case, the alkyl groups are present at opposite sides. We call such isomer as trans butene Now listen carefully. If there is more steric hindrance, energy of the molecule increases and stability of the molecule decreases. Let me repeat it. If there is more steric hindrance, energy of the molecule increases and stability of the molecule decreases. In the cis but 2 in the distance between the two alkyl groups are less than van der Waals radius, so there is more steric hindrance in this molecule. We know that more steric hindrance means less stability. Hence, it is less stable molecule. On the other hand, in the trans but 2 in the distance between the two alkyl groups are more than van der Waals radius, so there is no steric hindrance possible in it. We know that if there is no steric hindrance, the molecule is highly stable. Therefore, we say that trans but 2 in is more stable than cis but 2 in It is because there is no steric hindrance possible and trans but 2 in while there is more steric hindrance and cis but 2 in Hence, note down this important concept. Finally, we will learn important application of steric hindrance, which is steric hindrance in SN2 reactions. Consider these four organic compounds. We can see that this carbon is not bonded to any other carbon. It is methyl carbon. This carbon is bonded to one carbon. It is primary carbon. This carbon is bonded to two other carbons. It is secondary carbon. This carbon is bonded to three other carbons. It is tertiary carbon. Now consider that I bring hydroxide anion, which is a nucleophile. We know that this chlorine is a living group. Now this hydroxide ion will attack on this carbon 
and chlorine will leave the molecule. We know that it is SN2 reaction because the nucleophile attack and the leaving group which is chlorine leave the carbon at the rate determining step. It is a fast reaction because there is no steric hindrance in this molecule. Secondly, in case of primary carbon, this methyl block or shield the central carbon from nucleophilic attack. I mean hydroxide ion cannot attack from this direction. But still there is this path. Does this hydroxide ion or this nucleophile attack on this central carbon and chlorine leave the molecule? It is SN2 reaction. But it is slow reaction compared to the first reaction. Thirdly, in case of secondary carbon, there are two methyl groups, due to which there is more steric hindrance in this molecule. The nucleophile cannot attack from this side and from this side. It can only attack from this side. Thus this hydroxide attack on this carbon and chlorine leave the molecule. It is SN2 reaction, but it is very slow reaction compared to the second and the first one. Fourthly, in case of tertiary carbon, there are three methyl groups, due to which there is very high steric hindrance in this molecule. The hydroxide ion cannot attack on this carbon because the central carbon atom is blocked from all sides. Thus we say that no SN2 reaction is possible in tertiary carbon. It is due to high steric hindrance. Remember that tertiary carbon therefore follow SN1 reaction. Hence note it down this important concept. Also remember that in board examination it is usually asked why is tertiary alkyl halide not suitable for SN2 reaction? The answer is super easy. It is due to high steric hindrance. The central carbon atom is blocked from all sides and the nucleophile cannot attack on it. That's why tertiary alkyl halide is not suitable for SN2 reaction. Remember that they only follow SN1 reaction. Thus noted down this important question. I hope that you have learned all about steric hindrance.